The chair of the Joint World Bank IMF Development Committee, Barbados's Prime Minister Mia Motley, has made a plea for rich countries and financial institutions to provide more support for developing countries as they face the ravages of the pandemic and climate change. We hear more in this report from CARICOM News Time. She made representation for the region as chair of the Joint World Bank IMF Development Committee at the 53rd session of the Conference of African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Prime Minister Motley compared the significant disparities in developed and developing countries' response to the crisis, including the capacity of rich countries to deploy massive capital for stimulus. So while the advanced economies spent 8% of GDP to boost their economies, developing countries could only struggle to spend 1% or 2% of GDP. Third, our public and private financing flows have either disappeared or been too little too late. The inadequacy of the DSSI is something for us to reflect upon. This has been the centerpiece of the international community's response to COVID. This debt service suspension initiative really needs to be examined by us. While the advanced economies have added near $11 trillion of new debt, the relief that the 72 low-income countries eligible for relief under the debt service suspension initiative will be in the vicinity of $11 billion a thousand times smaller. She said the relative success of regions like CARICOM in managing the pandemic has served to hide the real devastation of COVID-19 from the world. I seek your support this morning for a recycling of the $500 billion of SDRs that better matches the problem and the problems we face. Additional fast dispersing resources are necessary. Firstly, to scale up the resource transfer needed to address COVID and climate change, we call upon the rich countries to pledge half of their new and their unused special drawing rights, to recapitalize development banks like the African Development Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank, the Asian Development Banks. They must use this capital to leverage more long-term lending to those heavily impacted by COVID and by the climate crisis to support green, yes, resilient, yes, and inclusive development, yes. The current resources available to the regional development banks are not sized for an economy stopping pandemic. They've not been sized to deal with the climate crisis and how it is impacting us disproportionately, particularly those of us between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. But it is not just the level of lending that matters, it is also the speed with which it is lent. Our needs are immediate, and the development banks have been well-meaning, yes they have been, but they've been slow, with lending tied up in efforts to draw up conditionalities and with the staff blaming their boards in many instances. We've experienced this in the region, our region. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We should not need to ask, but countries that have suffered double-digit declines in GDP last year need genuinely fast dispersing long-term budget support. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect countries around the world on two fronts, health and economics. Lockdowns and job losses had crippling effects in the global business community. Despite this, St. Lucia has been able to sustain in the investment marketplace. Invest St. Lucia is reporting that not only is the island maintaining foreign direct investment interest, local investment has been strong. In its 2020 review, Invest St. Lucia, ISL, assures that the island remains a key investment destination. Chief Executive Officer Roderick Cherry says despite a 42% plummet in global foreign direct investment last year, St. Lucia has maintained appeal with all its investors. ISL is currently facilitating a total pipeline worth EC $4.8 million. In its recent annual press conference, Sherry reported that the organization exceeded investment and job targets in 2019 and 2020. In 2020, even with the lockdown in the tourism sector because of COVID, there was a 32% increase in Invest St. Lucia's pipeline for facilitation in the tourism industry. 
There remains a high interest from established brands such as Marriott, Hyatt, and Hilton. ISL was able to facilitate one new investor that led to one new hotel opening during 2020. Another focus of Investor St. Lucia is the business process outsourcing sector, which saw 20% growth from both new and incumbent investors under ISL facilitation. In 2020, the sector created 771 new jobs in the market and is projected to create an additional 1,025 jobs in 2021. Invest St. Lucia also saw returns on its concerted effort to reach out to the local market. 20 proposals were vetted in the last six months, worth a projected $117 million and 1,025 jobs. ISL chairman is Pinkley Francis. Um, we've seen a lot of the, the local um, investors putting money out to grow their business. I mean, with permission, we can spoke about, um, we're in discussion with um, Baron Foods, um, and we are facilitating a major expansion, expansion in excess of $30 million. Um, we have, um, we've seen Bryson Company down in Beaufort making major expansion and um, stepping into industries they have never done before. Um, so not just foreign investments are, are showing an interest in St. Lucia, which is obviously big for us, but uh, you know, we have embraced the local investors and they are taking up the challenge and growing as well, which is very, very pleasing um, to me. I'm excited about that. Investor St. Lucia is also steady on its mission to make 600 St. Lucians landowners by 2021. We were able to create 100 new landowners in 2020. We continue on that quest with the addition of Lafargue development to our other housing developments at Boisjoli in Denry, Bosha in Miku. And, um, uh, and we are looking forward to the completion of the Lafargue development. By the end of 2021, Investor St. Lucia will also make available 1,055 land lots for sale under its land rationalization project. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. And you're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. The weather is up next.